I'm tired, and not in a tired that I've gotten lack of sleep, but a tired where I literally haven't been able to bring myself out of bed even after sleeping for 12 hours. A tired where I think about my day and refuse to get up. A tired where thinking about brushing my hair, making myself a meal, or even grabbing groceries feels impossible. This, my friends, is when I know I'm getting bad again. So today, I decided to get out of bed for myself and well for you. Today, I wanted to do something completely different and do more of a podcast style video. And I wanted to go through a few personal topics and just kind of talk to you about them. The first one is going to be my warning signs when it comes to seasonal depression, how to be proactive when you feel yourself getting bad again, and also some self-care practices that always seem to do the trick for myself. I am going to be looking over here a little bit just so I can keep myself on track because I'm really good at not keeping myself on track and rambling. So if I look away for a little bit, that is why. <laughs> and I'm also recording on my microphone. So hopefully it turns out okay. And hopefully it sticks with me because sometimes it gets angry. She has a mind of her own. But I wanted to touch on our first topic, which are warning signs that lead me to believe that I am going to be getting quote unquote bad again. And again, I put that in quotations because it isn't bad. It just is a word that is easily describable to myself and that allows me to kind of process that I need to start getting my quote unquote shit together, I guess, <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. But my warning signs for this and warnings that, you know, seasonal depression is around the corner, the days are getting shorter. What can I do to help myself? And also what can you do to help yourself? Because this time of the season really, really sucks. And it's really been getting to me. And I just want to be as open as I can about what I'm personally going through because I feel like a lot of you enjoy that and need that to feel valid because we are not alone in this at all. Like we have each other. So again, as I state, I ramble way too much, <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into some warning signs. So my warning signs are so simple and it can be from simple tasks around my house. Something as easy as cleaning a dish isn't going to happen or I'm going to tell myself, no, I'm just gonna wait, I'll do it tomorrow. But tomorrow leads to next week and next week leads to the next two weeks and then I have a shit ton of dishes and I have one fork left and this is bad <laughs> because I'm literally waiting until the last minute to accomplish the simplest of things that could probably be done in five minutes if I just wanted to do it but again this is one of my first warning signs of seeing that oh gosh uh something's creeping up on you. Maybe you should start being proactive. Maybe you should start doing more. Um, maybe you should start pushing yourself more and not just let dishes pile up. And although that can be so small, it can lead into something even bigger. And that leads to my next warning sign is when my personal tasks, the things that I usually love to do become like an endless mountain to me. And it feels hard to do it even when I think about doing it so again this can be something like me just sitting down and recording a video especially when it's becoming that time of the season when the days are getting shorter there's not as much light outside and I feel myself going into a depression is when simple tasks that are personal to me like making videos like sitting down and journaling or even brushing my hair or picking out a new outfit to wear it's when i've literally been in the same clothes all week and i start to realize oh god yeah uh i think i'm getting bad again i think that's what's happening and of course, my last tell sign is when I'm laying in bed a majority of the day 
and I'm not getting up to even make myself a meal. I can't even fathom trying to do it because it seems like such a strenuous activity. I have to get up out of bed. I have to think about what I wanna eat. I have to prepare the meal I want to eat and I have to do all these things. And even the thought of that feels like an endless battle that I'm not going to accomplish. Anyways, again, these are my own personal warning signs and maybe these are stuff that you see within yourself and you want to be able to get out of that rut. You want to be able to be proactive. You want to be able to feel heard when you're feeling this way. And so that's the next portion of this, which is how to be proactive or well, how I typically am proactive when getting in this rut, when figuring out that, oh my gosh, this is my seasonal depression leading up and I can feel myself getting deeper and deeper depressed. Is that even the right word? <laughs> deeper and deeper? You know what I mean. But my biggest tip for being proactive is being as self-aware as you can be and holding yourself, I guess in a way, accountable for what's going on with you right now. And again, at first, this is going to be difficult to do because you may not know that you are having any warning signs. You may not know that this is something that happens to you. So again, just be able to observe your behavior. So maybe you see yourself not wanting to do something. Maybe you see yourself losing interest in something that you usually enjoy. That could be a warning sign. Observe that and write them down. That was what helped me figure out when I'm getting quote unquote bad again. Like when it's happening is that I was able to write down certain things. Like today I didn't wash the dishes. Today, I stayed in bed until 3 p.m. I did not change my clothes today. I didn't do my hair today. <laughs> I didn't get out of the house. I didn't see the sunlight at all today. Simple things like that allows you to get more and more self-aware with your own behaviors. And also, another one including within this tip is to make sure that you're able to talk to someone, whether this be a person like your therapist or even just somebody that is a close friend or even your significant other, just being able to talk to somebody and allow them to know that, hey, I'm feeling this way. I want you to know I'm struggling with this. It really, really helps. It's gonna feel like shit at first to try to open up to somebody about what you're struggling with. But at the end of the day, it's so worth it to also have somebody watching out for you to also have somebody, you know, kind of care for you because there are so many people out there in your life that you don't realize care so much about you and want to help you when you're in this set, this like mindset in a sense. And they want you to be well. They want you to be okay. They want you to do better for yourself. And so allowing yourself to talk to somebody and be open and be vulnerable about what you're struggling with will really really help being proactive in the long run and you'll just thank yourself and your friend or significant other or even your therapist will be thankful in the long run because you're opening up and talking to them about yourself about what you're going through and that's very very important when being self-aware when being proactive about honestly getting depressed because it's a normal thing to have and you should feel okay opening up to people about it even though it can feel scary and this next one is a big big one that I do but it does stress me out at first when thinking about doing it because it's such a big task but it's worth it and this task is to make a daily schedule and yes yes it sounds as tedious as it is but i swear once you get rolling with it and you understand what things you need to do throughout your day to help yourself it becomes really really easy and then you can reuse your daily ones and but yes it's tedious but once you get the hang of it it becomes really quick and you're able to kind of reuse things you did in previous weeks or previous days and really get yourself back 
onto this schedule and this different mindset. And so what I like to do when I'm making a daily schedule and I'll put one up of like a sample of what my daily schedules look like. And I do something kind of ridiculous, which is like I do it on my computer first or I write it down and then I write it down and then put it on the computer. So I have it physically and then like anywhere I have my phone, I can have it with me as well. But when it comes to your schedule, include every little detail that you usually wouldn't include. Wouldn't include. And so when thinking about your daily schedule, think about things like brushing your hair. Think about things like taking a shower. Think about things like eating. Everything that's so simple that usually goes over your head, put it down in your schedule because you're going to thank yourself that you finally have a reminder to do something because it's gonna get you back into that routine. It's gonna get you back into a cycle where you understand what you need to do. And then slowly but surely, you can like fade out the schedule. But I would say wait a few months before doing that because you never know when the cycle can repeat, right? So that's a huge one that I enjoy having because I know I need it. And it really, really helps It looks a little wild when you first have it all planned out, but it makes sense. It makes sure you're doing things and you're like proactively getting things done so you don't spiral in to our lovely seasonal depression because it sucks and it's a really scary place to be in, especially if you're by yourself. So getting that daily schedule and even setting it up in a way, like I love to set it up in a way where it's hour by hour. And yes, that sounds so wild, but it helps so much of like, okay, it's 1030. I realize I've been in bed for two hours already. I need to get it together. What is on my schedule? What should I be doing? And Again, this is just another small thing that can create more habits that are healthy within your day so then you don't have to lead yourself into a depressive episode, which can happen, which does happen, which has happened to me, which is literally in a place that I'm in and why I'm talking about this right now because I'm right there with you. I'm right here just sitting and trying to get myself back into my routine, trying to get myself into a headspace where I am okay. And my last thing when it comes to being proactive is to be easy on yourself. Don't stress over everything. Don't try to get fixated over your schedule. Don't try to get over obsessed with how you're actually doing. Relax, be easy, and if at times you do have an off day or something throws you off and you lay in bed all day or something throws you off and you realize that you haven't eaten all day. It's okay. It's okay to be there. It's okay to be in that place for that time being. But again, remind yourself to get back into it the next day or to get back into it right then and there. Allow yourself to just take care of yourself. Be easy. Don't be so hard on yourself and trust the process. And so this last thing that I want to talk to you about when it pertains to kind of being proactive with seasonal depression or being proactive with getting yourself back into the groove of things after, you know, being depressed for so long, if that's what you're going through right now, or after you've been in a rut for so long, if that's what you're going through as well is to do some self-care practices. Um, Personally, self-care is so important to me and it's something that we often forget about. It's easy to forget about when we get through, when we go through like the day-to-day things that we always do. It's easy to put off not washing your face. It's easy to put off not wearing makeup. It's easy to put off things that you enjoy. It's so easy to do that when we're going through the motions of life and that is why I highly highly recommend 
to practice some sort of self-care and self-care looks different for each and every one of us so self-care for you might not be doing a face mask and getting your nails done that might not be self-care to you self-care to you might be sitting on the couch and watching your favorite netflix show and eating popcorn and that is completely okay especially during these times understand what self-care is like for you because everybody is different and you have different kind of practices for self-care and a few examples of what i enjoy doing and what i find is self-care is getting ready just getting dressed up even if i have nowhere to go that's how i practice self-care is you know sitting down doing my makeup watching some youtube watching some true crime while i do my makeup you know reading a book and even getting out of the house is a way that you can practice self-care maybe you're somebody that sits inside all day and that's really all you do or you work from home my you know recommended self-care practice for yourself would be to get outside sit outside for a moment even if it's for 10 minutes go for a drive do something that allows you to be outside if you're somebody who like me does most of their work at home and doesn't get out much i really really enjoy being able to go out even if it's for a drive to nowhere i think that still is self-care if that's something that makes you feel better at the end of the day also during this time when doing self-care practices i really really push journaling and meditation because i know that when i'm going back and feeling like i'm getting depressed or i've been laying in bed too long you know any of the things that lead up to seasonal depression it's literally because I haven't been journaling or I haven't been meditating or I haven't been doing the usual things that keep me going. So it's important to take those steps back and remember what you practice regularly or what you used to practice regularly. And for me, that's meditating, that's journaling. And if you've been on my channel for as long as I have, you know that's something that I find very important. So when I lose traction to that, it really, really messes with me and that's what I have to get back into. So making that a huge priority, I find literally releases so much stress and unknown feelings that I've personally been bottling up. So that might also be something for you to practice a little bit more than you're used to. But again, I have a bunch of different journaling videos, journaling prompts. So if you need help with that, you know you can go and scroll through the channel and see what you need to work on. Um, So there's that. I'll put some up around here, I guess, (laughs) for you to look at and see if you need that one. But anyways, this is like pretty much all I wanted to talk about. And I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times... um, nobody talks about these things especially with their own audience of what they're personally struggling with and for myself even if none of you wanted to watch this or none of you wanted to really listen it's something that i just needed to do for myself is truly write down how to get better and how to really get myself back into who i really am because i have been struggling (laughs) and I don't know I think it's so important to be open with all of you it's so important to truly understand that you're not alone in this and that life is not this perfect thing and being a person that creates content online it's not just fucking butterflies and roses like it's not that all the time and sometimes that's why i don't post content is because i'm going through my own personal battles and honestly when i'm going through my own personal battles i feel like that should be a time that i'm reaching out and speaking more to all of you because you never know if you're also going through it and need someone else to get you through the day because making content really does get me through the day and it's just what I need to do but anyways I really hope that you enjoyed this kind of different format of 
video. It's something new. I don't know if I'm going to ever do it like this again, where it's like very just kind of me sitting here raw, uncut, realistically talking into my microphone, talking to you guys. Um, but let me know if that's something you want more of like a podcast ish setting where I go through just literally my thoughts and things that I'm going through. I don't know. I, I don't even know. I feel like I'm rambling now, but <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this makes some sort of difference to you. And I really just want you to understand that you are not alone in this wild world and everything's going to be okay. But yeah, anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, check out a few other videos if you want to. Um, if you're new here, hi. <laughs> Sorry if this is your first impression of me, but hi, welcome. We rolled in quite quickly, huh? Um, <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, I will see all of you next Wednesday for a journaling video. I... I'm going to post a poll actually of what journaling you need for this upcoming Wednesday. Um, because honestly, I don't know what some of you need. It's been a while since I posted a poll of what you needed. So be sure to participate in that if you want to. Um, all right. I guess, I guess that is all. I love you all. Bye. <laughs>